All right, so of the Quark Evolution videos we've done so far and the ones yet to come, I feel like I can safely say that this one will end up being in a league of its own entirely. With these videos, we of course aim to further improve upon the quirks of various My Hero Academia characters, particularly the lesser focused ones, in an attempt to bring them to that next level and explore the potential of each of them. Well, in this installment of our series, as you can tell from the title, we're talking about Eri, a character who, once we're done with her, will be a godly force to be reckoned with. So without spending any more time, let's jump right into things. So Eri's quirk rewind, put simply, is an emitter type capable of reverting organic life back to a previous state. And when put like that, doesn't really sound too crazy. However, this quirk very much benefits from a lack of restriction. Typically, when Horikoshi details a character's quirk, he'll subsequently provide a few caveats to their power as to provide balance. But with this one, the limitations are honestly pretty negligible. Right now, the fact that she's an untrained seven-year-old is for the most part, the only thing holding her back from divinity. Now, as far as applications go, to be fair, we've only seen so much, which makes a whole lot of sense considering she's neither a hero nor a villain and instead, at least for now, just a civilian. But even still, with the literal first usage of her quirk, she erased her father from existence entirely. That alone is something that 99.99% of quirk wielders will never be capable of, no matter how far they manage to take their quirks. But after that, we of course have the case of one for all infinite 100%, which was all thanks to Rewind offsetting what would have been otherwise a fatal use of the quirk. And disregarding the insane damage output on Deku's end of the pairing, the sheer fact that Eri was able to revert Deku's body back at a rate to which he felt no damage at all during all of this devastation is just unreal. And mind you, this is her with only a faint understanding of her power and literally no training at all. That is terrifying. But something to take note of is that despite rewinding Deku's body back to a previously healthy state, we know for a fact that she does not revert him back entirely. And how do we know this? Memory. Deku showed absolutely no signs of his memory being affected by Rewind, which is to say that when it comes to rewinding organic life, Eri has the potential to specifically target an aspect of her choosing, which is the underlying factor of this quirk that Overhaul heralded the most. This is the X factor that allowed for the creation of the quirk destroying drug. When it comes to weaknesses, once again, they're really not that bad. Firstly, Rewind works exclusively on living things, so her quirk doesn't apply to inanimate objects or the dead. And because this quirk only works on the living, it's a difficult one to train without running the risk of causing what would possibly be irreparable damage to something or deleting them entirely. Next, she also has to touch her target directly for there to be an effect, making this power close range and excluding her inexperience, that's pretty much it. And so now that all that is out of the way, let's take this quirk to the next level and turn this little angel into a god. First things first, she'll need to be able to use rewind on herself. And at her current level, that would be really dangerous. But once she masters that, so many doors of possibility will open up for her. The first being the ability to self-heal. If Eri wasn't using her quirk during the fight against Overhaul, as All Might explained at the beginning of the series, Deku's limbs would have blown off. So once again, for him to have taken no damage at all during all of that punishment to me, establishes the possibility for Eri to become the greatest healer in the world. Because with that, damage can't even be processed fast enough to keep up with her rate of healing. And that wasn't even the fastest that she could do. So if she were able to apply this to herself, she'd not only be the greatest healer, but also a ridiculous tank, because honestly, the amount of damage required to even make a dent in that is just absurd. So just having her on your team would mean recovery from even the most fatal of wounds. 
and unlimited stamina on top of that so you can fight indefinitely. And if she really wanted to, she could have her pick of even Silver Age allies like Gran Torino or Recovery Girl by reverting their bodies back to their prime, which by extension opens the door to something as mind-boggling as immortality. If she so desired, Eri could become the forever hero, remaining in her prime for as long as she wants once she gets there. And I don't know, the thought of her body remaining young despite her age and her being the greatest healer in the world gives me major Lady Tsunade vibes and I love it. And to take that forever hero concept even further, she could make that whole justice never sleeps thing literal. And she could do that by never needing to sleep or even eat again by just rewinding that aspect of herself. And if by this point you're thinking to yourself that all of this sounds super busted and overpower, you'd be right. But listen, we haven't even gotten to offense yet. And this is the department that really makes Eri's quirk world breaking. In her toolkit, Eri possesses the ability to wipe someone out of existence just by touching them. And at the rate she's able to heal herself, if she decides to close that distance to do it, it'll be pretty difficult to stop her. Now, of course, heroes don't kill, so what's the next best thing to deleting them entirely? Deleting their quirk. When it comes to physicality, Eri could be the most pitiful combatant in the world, and it wouldn't matter, because so long as she manages to touch you, she wins. And I mean, so long as she doesn't use this on a fellow hero or out of malicious intent against the innocents, there's no societal restrictions to this either, so she could remove the threat of certain villains forever. And if not removal from existence, or the removal of quirks, she could still have the choice of removing memories or stamina. And as if all that weren't enough, there is a way to make Rewind a sort of pseudo all for one. Because Eri would be able to revert specific aspects of her own body to a previous state, she could, by extension, provide herself with abilities beyond her own quirk. For instance, if the likes of Uraraka were to touch her and make her float, Eri could subsequently toggle that aspect on and off. So pretty much any temporary buffs or conditions her body may have experienced thanks to the quirks of others in the past would then be able to become permanent tools in her arsenal. So even something like the dangerous quirk enhancement drug Trigger could be used by her side effect free. Now of course Trigger is illegal so as a hero that wouldn't be the best idea, but then again technically Deku, Ida, and Todoroki fighting Stain was illegal too so meh. And oh man, as unbelievable as it may sound, there is still the potential for more depending on the direction Horikoshi decides to take with this whole Mirio predicament. Because if Eri is to use Rewind on Mirio as a means of giving him back his quirk, then that opens up a whole new can of worms. And I say this because what took Mirio's quirk was an indirect resultant of Rewind's power. The quirk aspect of his body was brought to non-existence, so for Eri to restore his quirk, she would effectively be undoing the effects of her own quirk. And that is major, because it would stand to bring that previous state aspect of her quirk's definition into question. For example, if she were to rewind an apple back into a seed, she would be reverting it from its current state into its previous state. However, along the timeline, what was formerly its current state as a fully grown apple would then by definition become its previous state, with its presence as a seed now becoming its current state, creating a sort of perpetual loop akin to the question of what came first, the chicken or the egg? And if that's the case, further down the pseudo all for one rabbit hole we go, because then once she's an adult, she'll have access to a more advanced age altering that may double as size shifting, allowing her to avoid dangers or fit in smaller places. Not to mention she'd be able to cycle through her altered states on the fly or hell, even stack them onto one another so long as they don't conflict in terms of bodily application. 
And going back to the whole apple thing, because a tree is a living thing, she could potentially take a tree, turn it back to a seed, then back to a tree whenever she wants and just keep a whole bag of those things like that. I, I mean, it it's crazy. And man, what's even crazier about all this is that even if just one of the things we've talked about in this video comes to fruition, that alone could serve to place Eri in a league of her own. I mean, with the overall arc, Horikoshi really gave us some crazy powerful quirks, but even still, this one stands above all the rest. As a trade-off, this quirk is probably the most difficult in the series to properly develop and train, but goodness, when thinking of all that it could potentially do in the future, you can't even complain. Now, Eri has certainly experienced some unspeakable horrors in her life on account of her quirk, but I will say that there are no other six-year-olds getting attention from Japan's number one hero academy, so she's in a really good situation to figure out and control her quirk going forwards. But yeah, that about does it for what is one of, if not debatably, the greatest quirk in the series and our quirk evolution of it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed because this series is always a load of fun for me to create and we have plenty more to come. If you haven't already, be sure to check out our other Quirk Evolution videos, the previous one being on Kirishima, and any of the other wonderful My Hero videos we have on the channel. Not too long ago, we surpassed 10,000 subscribers over here, and the support lately has been insane, so Jay and I can't thank you guys enough. If there's any character or quirk you'd like us to cover with this series in the future, let us know in the comments so we can keep bringing you the kind of stuff you're excited to see. Thank you all so much for watching and have an awesome day. I love you.